Hey bikers, it's Pierce here with Electric Bike Report, and today we have a Velos Delta X. This is a trail slash commuter bike with 750 watts of power in its mid-drive motor that's capable of a whopping 120 newton meters of torque. This bike is extremely fast, really good looking, and comes with some premium parts for a really good price point. I'll get into all those specs in the review, so we'll see you out there. So you briefly heard me talk about a few of these key components in the intro. Now I'm going to go more in depth on what makes this a killer value for what you're paying on the Delta X. So let's start out with our mid-drive motor from Bafang here. This is a 750 watt motor capable of 120 newton meters of torque. That's a lot of torque and with 750 watt motors, it's not very common that you see them get above that 100 newton meters of torque or so. Powering that is your 48 volt battery here. This has 11.6 amp hours of power. You also have a lever throttle on this bike. This lever throttle here, I prefer for a couple of reasons. One, you don't accidentally twist the throttle when you're pedaling. And two, it gives you a little bit more linear motion on how much throttle you want to use as opposed to your typical uh, grip shift throttle. You have 180 millimeter disc brake rotors on here that are connected to hydraulic disc brake calipers from Tektro. This is a lot of stopping power for this bike and for how powerful this bike, I think that's pretty important. Keeping this bike plush is your 100 millimeter spring fork from Suntour. I really like the lockout on this fork. For a bike like this, where it's more of a hybrid design, sometimes you're gonna want that fully locked out feel, and other times you're gonna have that fully open feel for when you're off-road and still needing traction. You also have a new Vinci shifter connected to an Enviolo drivetrain on this bike. And essentially what that means is this bike has a very wide gear range and you don't need to be pedaling to shift this bike at all. They've really set up the display for the shifter and the feeling for the shifter, super smooth and it's very well thought out and you can tell the second you hop on this bike. You'll notice there is no gearing on the outside here. It's all internal and it's all very smooth like I said. I think anyone who's riding this bike is really going to come to appreciate the Enviolo drivetrain for the gear range it provides and for how seamless it feels when you're shifting. Holding the bike together is a 6061 alloy hydroformed frame that they've clearly taken a lot of care with. You can see how it's formed around the battery itself. And because of that, it makes that external battery have more of an internal look and feeling when you're riding. And they back this whole bike up with a four year, 20,000 mile warranty. That's pretty impressive. Anyone who's gonna get 20,000 miles on their bike is going to need it to last. And to me, this warranty really shows Avello is confident in what they're giving to you. And that's a lot of peace of mind for me. If I'm out there doing a lot of miles, I wanna know this thing's gonna last and that I'm covered by the company designing the bike overall. Everything adds up into a very smooth riding bike. And like I've said before, it's a very good price point for what you're getting. The Enviolo drivetrain, the suspension fork, the super wide tires, the hydraulic brakes, in my opinion, this bike should be a lot more expensive than it is. So shout out to Avello for the price point and the quality of this bike. So at this point, you're probably wondering how all of these components add up when you're out there on the trail. Lucky for you, we're going to be testing that. We have a range test to test the battery, a hill test to test the power of the motor. We're also going to do a speed and acceleration test for the bike speed overall. And last but not least, a stopping power test to make sure you can stop. Our team was curious about how far the Avello Delta X could get on a full charge while pedaling the whole time on max assistance. Within an hour and 33 minutes, we had gone a staggering 26.47 miles with an average speed of 17 miles per hour. A solid two to three miles per hour faster than what we are used to seeing. This is pretty impressive considering the bike nearly weighs 67 pounds. During the Delta X range test, we also set a few personal records, all of which were uphill. This goes to show how the Delta X can flatten hills thanks to its 120 newton meters of max torque. 
For us, the impressive part wasn't how far we got on the Delta X, it was how quickly we got there and how flat the hills felt. This bike can move, and we are confident that if we are trying to conserve the battery that the Delta X would easily get over 40 miles. So one of the biggest questions with electric bikes is how good are they at flattening hills? Like I mentioned, this Delta X has a 750 watt motor with that whopping 120 newton meters of torque. So we're going to see how it can do on this 12% grade hill here. We have two different tests that we're doing on this hill climb. One, we're going to be on full throttle and the other, we're going to be on full pedal assist. During both tests, I'll be recording my time and miles per hour to see how fast I'm going, how slow I'm going, and how fast I can complete this hill overall. It's very apparent this is a powerful bike, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how it does on this nasty hill. Let's see how it goes. Alrighty guys, so we just finished up the hill climb test and I'm fresh as when I started. This bike really took over as I thought it would for the specs that are given. So when it came to the throttle only without me pedaling at all, I entered this hill at around 21 miles per hour. That speed dropped off pretty quickly though and my lowest speed was around three miles per hour. When I got to the top of the hill, it was a minute and 53 seconds. Onto the pedal assist, when I was at max pedal assist, I got to the top of the hill at a minute and 23 seconds, and I entered the hill at around 20 miles per hour. My lowest speed was around seven, and so what we're gathering here is you're going to probably be around the same speed on flat ground, but when it comes to entering and using the bike on a hill, your average speed is going to be a lot higher if you are pedaling on that max assist level. So about a 30 second difference between throttle and max pedal assist. What I've really gathered is that this bike is going to be able to climb the steepest of hills, even if you don't do anything at all. So it gets a good rating in the climbing book from us. Let's go to the next test. Alrighty guys, we're on to our next test, the 100 yard dash. The purpose of this test is to see how fast we can get going within a 100 yard stretch and how long it takes us to pass these cones from the starting line. Similar to the hill test, we're going to be doing this test on throttle only and on max pedal assist where I pedal sitting down. We know this bike's powerful from the hill test, so let's see if that power translates to the flats and straightaways just like it did the hills. We'll see how it goes. Alrighty guys, that was a lot of fun. Just finished up the 100 yard dash for the throttle and pedal assist level five and I have my results. So on throttle only, I got 14.4 seconds and crossed the line at around 20 miles per hour or so. With pedal assist level five, I got 12.4 seconds and crossed the line around 23, 23 and a half miles per hour. So there was about a two second difference on the 100 yard dash in time and about a three to three and a half mile per hour difference when it came to crossing the line here. So as we can see, pedal assist level five is gonna get you going the fastest if you're looking for quick acceleration and getting around top speed as quick as you can. This thing is just as powerful as I thought it was on the straights. And like I said, that was a lot of fun. Let's move on to our next test. So at this point in the review, it's super obvious that this is a really powerful bike capable of very high speeds and acceleration. With that being said, it's important that this bike is stocked with the proper brake to make sure that you can stop when you need to and that it's predictable when you do stop. Like I've said in the specs, this is stocked with 180 millimeter rotors and hydraulic disc brakes from Tektro. I've had a good experience with these brakes so far, but we're going to show you how they respond on five foot increments when I brake from top speed. So let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty guys, that was the braking test. And after a couple tests, we averaged 21 and a half feet for how long it took us to stop. All of those stop margins were within a few feet of each other and the braking was overall very consistent and very responsive. That's essential for such a powerful bike. And I would definitely say the brakes are on tier with the power of this bike to stop you when you need to stop. I would definitely say Avello did a good job choosing the correct brakes for this bike, so you should not have any issues stopping on the Avello Delta X. Alrighty guys, so we finished up our testing on the Avello Delta X, and let me just say, this is a powerful, very well engineered bike, and I'm really impressed so far with how it's performed. Anytime you have an Enviolo drivetrain, and 120 newton meters of torque, you know this bike's ready to play. You also have that 750 watt motor on there, and that was very apparent that it was using full power and it was very capable on the hill climbs and on the straightaways when we were doing the 100 yard dash. This bike, I see it as kind of a trail bike and a commuter. You could take this on some gravel roads, forest roads, or you can take it as your daily commuter to work it's gonna kill it either way because of some of those key components that I've mentioned that they give you. You have the 27 and a half by 2.8 inch wide Supermoto Schwalbe tires. These things corner really well, they roll fast, and they smooth out the bumps on the trail because of how voluminous they are. You also have very performance oriented handlebars, grips, and saddle. That just feels good when you're trying to handle around corners super fast, and really enjoy your time on the bike at higher speeds, honestly. So when it comes to the pros of this bike, it's extremely powerful. They've stocked it with extremely good components for the price point, and it's visually, I think, one of the better looking e-bikes you can find in this category. On the con side, we had to be pretty nitpicky because overall, we've been impressed with the Delta X. What it really came down to is your grips and your saddle may be a little uncomfortable for some valuing comfort over performance. And the 68 pound tag on this bike may be a little heavy for some to lift up stairs and into their rack. Like I said, that's just getting nitpicky though. The 68 pounds feels great on the trail. I realize it weighs that because they're stocking this thing with a lot of power, a lot of juice. So that weight makes a lot of sense to me. No complaints for me there. Again, I'm getting nitpicky. So with all of that being said, this is the Avello Delta X. My name is Pierce with Electric Bike Report, and I really appreciate you guys watching today. I wanna hear what you thought about this review in the comments below, and if you've had any experiences on the Delta X. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and check out our in-depth written review on the Delta X in the description below. I really appreciate you watching, like I said, and I'll see you next video.